Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And then after this, the author he spoke about al itq and al itq is the emancipation of those slaves who are owned and in slavery, and freeing them so they are free. When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent, and the religion of Islam was established and revealed, there were many different ways for which people would be brought into slavery. And Islam came and abolished all those ways for a person to, be, to become a captive or a slave, except for two particular ways. And at the same time, Islam placed many ways and many causes for a slave to be emancipated and freed from slavery. And this shows that Islam came to abolish slavery except in two very restricted situations. And also, Islam ordered with treating the slaves properly and well to the extent that a person is not allowed to call his slave Abdi. And also, if the master or the owner, if he violates the slave or transgresses him or cuts off something from him, then this is a cause for the slave to become free. All the ulama, they mention in the books of fiqh, even in Manhaj al-Salikin, the ulama in the books of fiqh, including in Manhaj al-Salikin, they mention the ruling of a ridda And a ridda is apostasy, meaning a person who is a Muslim and he does a certain action which is shirkun akbar or kufrun akbar and therefore leaves the fold of Islam. May Allah protect us. And these, generally speaking, there are four matters. A particular statement, for example, if a person insults the religion insults Allah, ins Subhana insults the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then secondly, certain actions like magic, black magic, sihr. And then third, certain beliefs, like if a person believed that other than Allah has knowledge of the unseen or that there will be a prophet after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the fourth cause of apostasy, a ridda, is doubt, meaning if a person doubts whether the Prophet وسلم, is the final messenger or not. Or if a person doubts the, the prophethood of the Prophet وسلم, And when it comes to the chapter of uh, Ridda, apostasy, the ulama, they talk about the ruling of apostasy. They don't talk about the punishment of apostasy. As opposed to when it comes to, for example, the punishment of the thief, they mention the punishment of the thief. And the punishment of the sahir, they mention the punishment of the sahir. When it comes to the murtad, the apostate, they talk about the ruling of apostasy. And this is because the murtad, he is uh, questioned by the hakim, by the state, by the sultan, and he is told to repent and come back into Islam. As of, and, and therefore, no ruling or no punishment is applied to him. As opposed to thief, for example, even if the thief was to repent, the punishment still applies to him. And also, the ulama mentioned in the chapter in fiqh regarding al-qadf. And al-qadf is an accusation which is made against another person. Like, for example, the accusation of kufr, takfir, the accusation of disbelief. Or, for example, accusing another person of fahisha indecency and immorality and the sharia ah, it established many things and from those matters which were established by the sharia ah, is the protection of a person's religion and this is with regards to the hukum of the murtad and also protecting pe protecting people's intellect and this is why khamar has been forbidden and also to protect and make sacred the honor of people. And this is why it is not permitted for a person to violate the honor of another person. And if this was done under the Sharia, ah, then that person whose honor was violated, he has a right to complain to the Qadi, the Muslim judge, and then the punishment is applied to that person who violated his honor. And for this reason, if a, a person is accused of murder, it requires two trustworthy witnesses. And if those two trustworthy witnesses are found and then the state or the ruler looks at the judgment and analyzes the case and they found that person to be guilty, then the Islamic punishment is applied. 
with two trustworthy, reliable witnesses. However, when it comes to an accusation of a zina, of adultery, four witnesses are required. Four trustworthy, reliable witnesses. Why? Because this relates to this accusation, it relates to the honor of a person. And that honor has to be sacred and protected. And also the Sharia, it established and it came with the protection of people's wealth. And how is the wealth of the people protected? And also the Sharia, it came with the command to protect the wealth of the people. And how does the Sharia protect the wealth of the people? That the ruler or the Qadi has a right to control the wealth of certain groups of people. And that is the one who is young and the one who has a mental disability because both of these groups of people they don't know how to look after and spend their wealth and so in this case the state or the qadi is all able to control their wealth or give power of attorney to people who will be guardians over their wealth so this is one section the other section there are some people who enter into business and, tra and trading and maybe they they lose and then enters into another business deal and then loses. Another business deal, a third one, then loses again. And then the debts and the loans are building up and the people are requesting from him to repay the debts. And, and so this person who is taking on debts and failing in businesses and his debts are growing and people are requesting for the loan to be paid back and he's not paying the loan back. What do they do? They go to the Qadi, the Muslim judge, the Muslim court and they raise a case against him. Naam. And they say that this person, he is taking people's money and it's a game to him and he's not paying the money. So here, the Qadi has a right to enforce an order upon that person, like an order of in insolvency, and take control by force of the wealth of this person. And this is because some people, they do not desist except by the power of the law. And this is why in this country, if you know of people who are planning violence or to blow or to bomb certain places, it is an obligation upon you to notify the authorities regarding that person. And if you do not notify the authorities regarding this person who is planning these activities, then you are an associate of his in this action. Why? Because this person being prevented from this level of violence and bombing and indiscriminate killing, this is for the benefit of all of us. And if a person said, but why is it your business? Let him kill the non-Muslims. Because if you look around you and if you listen and if you watch these cases, you will see that these people are not killing non-Muslims. They are killing Muslims. It is the masajid which are being blown up. And why? Because this person believes that as for the non-Muslims, they were non-Muslims by default. But as for you people, you are murtadin, you are apostates, you have left the fold of Islam. And this is a deen, this is his aqidah, this is what he believes. And he also believes that the killing of a murtad, i.e. me and you, comes first before the killing of the kafir asli. And this is why we have to understand and study who is a murtad. So it isn't the case that any individual who commits a major sin now becomes an apostate like what these people think. And for this reason, our brothers, we have to learn. Because through learning and through knowledge, you are removing ignorance from yourself and you're removing ignorance from others. And therefore, these problems do not occur. And then after this, the author, he finished his book with the chapter of Al-Iqrar. And the reason why the author, he finished his book with the chapter of Al-Iqrar because this was him hoping and having optimism in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah allows him to live his life to the end upon accepting la ilaha illallah. And because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever his last speech or his last statement is la ilaha illallah, there's nothing between him and Jannah except death. And then the last statement of phrase which the author mentioned, rahimahullah, is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the alhamd of Allah. Why? He's thanking and praising Allah who allowed him and guided him to complete this goodness. And this is why we should praise Allah at the beginning and the end. And then the author finished by sending salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to end upon tawheed for me and you. 
and may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.